Lord First, you need to know yourself. Uh, that is our topic, inshallah, which will carry on for the whole month, inshallah. Uh, we are taking this advantage to have a little bit of introduction to the holy book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, inshallah ta'ala, we'll go through, this is just a little introduction, uh, because when the holy prophet was leaving this world he said that i'm leaving you with two things inni tarikun fi kumat thaqalain kitab allah wa itrati ahl baiti one is the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the second is my ahlul bayt inshallah during the month we will talk about the lifestyle of ahlul bayt but inshallah we definitely start start with the quran i see if i can cover this within next 40 minutes otherwise we'll bring one more lecture about Quran, maybe tomorrow. Now, here we see just a little bio data of the Holy Book Quran, where you can see there are 114 surahs or chapter. Juice, juice basically is called part, which we once we recited today. Because in the early Islam, when this Salatul Tarawi came into existence, obviously Muslim of that time, they divided the Quran into 30 equal parts. That's why it's called 30 Jews. Because they had 30 days of the month of Ramadan, 30 nights, so every night they used to recite one Jews. It's okay. But basically Quran contains 114 surahs, start with Surah Al-Fatiha, Fatha yaftahu, that means he opened, he opens. This is the root word Fatha. With Fatha, so Fatha is called Fatha because Fatha means to open <coughs> and Fatha means which opens the Quran. It, start with, it starts with Surah Al-Fatiha which contains seven Quranic verses. It starts with Bismillah up to Walad Dhalin. Alhamdulillah, we all know this. There are 6,238 verses in the Quran. This figure of 6,666, I couldn't find anywhere. I've done this research myself. I use, obviously there's only one Quran. It doesn't matter if the Shias, they are using this Quran or Sunnis or Wahhabis or Deobandis, but there is only one Quran, which is start with Bismillah rahman rahim and ends with one Nas. That's the whole Quran, 114 surahs. I had four different, same Quran, but four different translation. I put them together and I went page by page. And Alhamdulillah, this is the figure comes for the Quranic verses, 6,238 verses. And Bismillah is included in there. But as the first Quranic verse. According to the Shia school of thought, Bismillah is part of the Surah. Every single Bismillah is different than the previous one. For example, when we start Surah Al-Fatiha, we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. But when we start the next Surah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif Lam Mim Dhalik Al-Kitabu La Rai Bafi. So when we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim for the second Surah, that Bismillah belong to Surah Al-Fatiha. It's not the same Surah. It's not there only for blessing. It is there for reason. Because there is not a single word or even single letter you can find in the Holy Book Quran which is there without any wisdom. So using Bismillah just for blessing, 
that is not the answer but at the same time there is one evidence available in the quran where is that surah at tauba which is called surah al surah barat as well surah at tauba is surah number 9 in the quran <coughs> and that surah start without bismillah you can see it i think it's roughly 8th or 9th juz you can see there that surah start without bismillah so 6238 verses in the quran the longest surah is surah al baqarah which is the second surah which we alhamdulillah started with today which contains 286 quranic verses one verse means is one sentence which gives the complete meaning we know that the difference between word because a sentence is a combination of few words which gives a proper and full meanings for example if i say door this open but it doesn't explain but if i say this door is open it makes sense so it gives complete sense one quran verse but obviously verses are connected with each other the shortest surah in the quran is surah al kawthar surah number 108 inna ataina kal kawthar which contains only three verses there is another surah in the quran which contains three verses but the wordings are more than inna ataina kal kawthar and that surah is surah al nasr اذا جاء نصر الله والفتح قران is divided into 30 equal parts which call juz or we use one word especially in our two language which is c para c means 30 in farsi language and para means juz or part ya tukda jaise aap kehte hain so c para means 30 juz then we have some wajib sajdas in the quran these detail will come inshallah in a while where are these sajdas and what we have to do that will come and then we have mustahab sajdas for wajib sajdas you have to give the sajda as soon as possible but for wajib sajdas most of the ulama says that you have to be in the state of wudu for mustahab sajdas if you hear it you can give the sajda there and then or later and some of the ulama says that for mustahab sajda wuzu is not needed but some of the ulama says even for mustahab sajda mustahab means recommended it is not compulsory on you but you do it you will get get the extra reward there are 11 of them some of the ulama says there are 10 of them why is that inshallah we go to the next slide and we see then we have 14 huruf e muqattaat muqatta is from qat qat means the broken one the broken letters and how many broken letters in the quran 14 for example when we say alif lam mim <coughs> when surah al fatiha completes and the first su- second surah starts we start with alif lam mim if you see you cannot read alif lam mim together or kaf ya ain sad ha mim alif lam mim ra kaf ya ain sad there are so many there are 14 of them and there are 28 surahs or i if i don't remember properly i think it's 28 or 30 surah which start with huruf e muqattaat for example 29 as brother tasveer said 29 surahs start with huruf e muqattaat for example example surah to yusuf surah number 12 alif lam ra tilka ayatul kitab al mubin so we have so many example like this then we have If you see the second last column, it says "karad," the way of recitation. For example, when we read "Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin," "Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin," "Ar Rahman Ar Rahim," "Maliki Yom Bidin," but some of the Middle East countries, some of the people, especially people in Tunisia, instead of "Maliki Yom Bidin," they say they, they say "Maliki Yom Bidin." Malik means is the king, and Malik means is the master. deeply the meanings are almost the same so there are similarities but there are different accent you can say different qarat mean different accent it does not give you seven different meanings please be careful here mainly the quran recitation either we recite or we hear that is called either hafs or asim these are the two quras they were from the old age and at the moment most of the muslim So I would say 95% plus they use, or even more than that, they use the same way the way they recite. All kind of you can see there are different kinds of soil. 
different kind of earth you can see. And Jibreel al Islam first he said, My Lord, permit me, I'll go and get him. According to Mullah Muhammad Bakir Majalsi, which he described through the sixth Imam, Jibreel al Islam came and he tried to take the earth from the earth, but the earth sh starts shivering. And Jibreel said, Why you are shivering? And earth replied that Jibreel, I want you not to take this path of mine to create human being. And Jibreel, he said, okay, and Jibreel went back. Same way Israfil and Mikail came, these three came. It was Hukm which is hukm -e irshadi not hukm -e maulavi There is a difference between hukm -e irshadi and hukm -e maulavi hukm -e irshadi for example, if, I'm just giving an example, please just take it as an example. If I ask for ex example, can please someone bring me a glass of water? This is hukme shadi. Anybody can stand up and bring a glass of water. But if I specifically say, Brother John, can you please, or please, you have, or you have, you must have to bring this glass of water. This is hukme Malvi. If he denies, then in that case, if there was a commitment between him and me, in that case, he is nauzubillah. I'm just giving an example. This is, it's a kind of sin, or it's a kind of something which is going against the command. This is called, called hukam e maulavi So this command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bringing the earth from the earth, bringing this dust from the earth was not hukam e maulavi it was hukam e irshadi And same hukam was to Hazrat Adam al Islam. Adam, do not go near to that fruit. That was hukam e maulavi not hukam e maulavi hukam e irshadi It was a choice because when Adam and Eve, they both were going near to this tree. The angels, they ran towards, if I can say ran, they ran towards Adam and Eve to stop them. And they heard the voice, the voice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where are you going? Said, our Lord, he is going against your command. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that was my hukm, my command, irshadi. But at the same time, I gave them aql. If they use their aql, they should not go against me. So when we see there are some of the people, they're going against the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means they are not using their aql. So that time, Hazrat Adam al Islam had a choice and he took the wrong path according to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first of three angels came to the earth and tried to get the dust. But every time when they tried to take the dust, the earth starts shivering and pleaded, and yelling and crying, don't take this dust from me. So it, Allah will create human being and that human being will create problem for me. And then fourth, three time, these three went back and Allah said, yes, what's the news? Allah knew that. And they said, oh our Lord, that the earth start crying. So that's why we couldn't do it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Israel, you go and get it. Israel went there. Israel went and he, when he tried to get the dust to create Adam al Islam, and earth did exactly the same. And his, earth said exactly the same thing. Said, why are you taking this? The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create a human being and that human being will create problem on me. And then Israel said, Allah has commanded me. That was hukm -e irshadi for them, but it is hukm -e maulavi for me. I will not go against the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will take the dust. So he is taken the dust when he took the dust before the place. And that time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, now it is your job when I create the human being and the time come for the death of the human being, then you will go and bring their soul back. Can you see the thing here? So that's why Hazrat Israel. But at, at the same time, Hazrat Israel Islam is a very, very lovable character. Beautiful character. Because Hazrat Israel, he's not working with his own thinking. He is just following, simply following the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Israel comes, Israel is the only gate which take us from this materialistic world into the spiritual world where we can meet our own Lord. What can be the best to meeting our own Lord? And Israel is the one who takes us from here. Now inshallah we see at this dust, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in different ahadith. We will see. Now this, the root word for this is ta, ra and ba. Taraba. It occurred 22 times in the Quran. Three times like at turab Once taraib and turab. And then mutraba. Once. All together 22 times it came into the Quran. And we can see in these Quranic verses. That the word at turab dust how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used in the Quran. The first one, which is from Surah Turra'a, Surah number 13, and verse number 5. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim wa im ta'ajab fa'ajabun qolum a'idha kunna turaban a'inna lafi khalkin jadeed. Anybody want to get amazed? perplexed then listen to these people these people say once we die and we turn into dust when we turn into dust who's gonna bring us into completely new creation on different places Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we created you before any role model before us and now once you die and you are dust into dust then creating second time that is not a problem for us because creating something first time that can be a problem but if something is being created before what's the difficulty to creating the same thing again there is one of the hadiths of sixth imam he says that before the resurrection of the whole humanity there will be a rain for 40 days on this earth and the whole earth will be filled up with water. The whole earth. There won't be a single patch even for an inch as a dry land. Everything will be fully covered with water. And then at the same time, if we read Suratul Zilzal, Suratul Zilzal is Surah number 99, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Billahi <laughs> وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ أَسْقَالَهَا وَقَالَ الْإِنسَانِ مَا لَهَا يَوْمَ إِذِنْ تُحَدِّتُوا أَخْبَارَهَا بِأَنَّ رَبَّكَ أَوْ حَالَهَا That on the day of judgment, when the earth will be shaken, and whatever is in the earth, it will come out from the earth. And the human being, after the resurrection, will say, what's happened to this earth? And that time, the earth will say, that my Lord has commanded me to give all the news which were hidden within me for millions of years and all the human beings all the particles from the bodies of the human being will come out that's according to Imam Sadiq Islam. all the particles of the bodies will come out and with this water all the particles they will find each other and all the bodies will come into one shape and then the spirit will come back into the body and a human being will be standing and be accountable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is one of the sides. And then another one. <clears throat> another, another time it comes. The first one came Turaba. And now this one is Turabin. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya Yohannas. This one is in Surah Al-Hajj. Surah number 22. Again verse number 5. Ya Yohannas. In kuntum fi rabim min al ba'ate fa inna khalaknakum min turab. O the people, do you doubt about your existence, your resurrection? We created you from dust. You know this dust. When you put some water in it, then it show you show you in all the miracles. Inshallah, when we talk about uh, clay tomorrow, which is a teen. Inshallah, we will go into the detail. The next one, which is in Surah Tul Kahf, Surah number 18, verse number 37, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Akafarta billadi khalaka ka min turab. Do you still deny when we created you from the dust? Say salwar, please. Now, few of the Quranic verses you can see here. Inshallah, I'll pick up one from this seat because we have very less time left. The next one, for example, if you go for the middle one, 
وہ اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی سے اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم قالوا اذا متنا وكنا ترابا واضاما ان لمبعوثون this is say is it that when we will die and become dust and bones isn't it that we will be raised again these human being putting these question there was one of a non muslim an atheist came to the holy prophet this incident you can see i think is verse number 65 in surah al yasin you can see there this incident should be described there in the tafsir of that quranic verse a person an atheist came to the holy prophet and he was holding a bone very old bone god knows maybe 100 years old bone of a human being which he found somewhere from the graveyard so he brought that bone before the holy prophet and then he start smashing this bone bone and this whole bone turned into powder and then he showed this to the holy prophet and holy prophet holy prophet says why are you doing this and he said now you claim to be the prophet of allah subhanahu wa taala and you say when we turn into dust like this then we come back into existence is that possible so these kind of question people used to come and impose on the holy prophet and the holy prophet instead of giving them the answer by themselves he used to use these quranic verses which we are reading here another verse where allah subhanahu wa taala says a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem surah an-naml surah number 16 verse number 67 wa qala alladhina kafaru and these non believer what they say اذا كنا ترابا واباؤنا اننا لمخرجون is it that when we and our fourth and our fathers become dust is it that we shall really become brought forth would we come back after we turn into dust in the quran there are several places where allah subhanahu wa taala says inna allaha ala kulli shay'in qadir he has the power over everything Azizan I've given this incident before but I think there is a place for this incident This incident is available in Hayatul Qulub the ending part of Hayatul Qulub described by our fourth <coughs> Imam Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salatu wassalam Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad I think I've described this incident here before but I think there's a place for this incident right now Imam says that after prophet moses in bani israel there was a person who was a thief and he used to steal the dead people's shroud kafan logon ke kafan churata tha qabar mein haath dal ke unke kafan nikal leta tha and he was famous for this bad action once his neighbor called him and his neighbor was nearly dying when he went to see his neighbor he saw that his neighbor he was severely sick and on the table there were two piece of clothes placed and the neighbor he said that here are two piece of clothes and these both are for my shrouding my coffin i want you to please pick up the one you like but when i die in few days please do not please do not come <coughs> to my grave and snatch my coffin and this person said no no it's not like this i'm your neighbor <laughs> or don't do this he said look don't be shy i know and everyone knows that you do this amaliya kabi the bad of the verse of the action so you pick up one so there were two there one was very expensive and one was very cheap so he picked up the expensive one and he went after few days this neighbor of that person he died and because at the same time he was a thief but at the same time he's had this habit and not to get rid of the habit azizan there is a saying of masumin if a person does worship because of the habit please be careful when a person does worship because of the habit that worship is worth nothing is the saying again of imam zainul abidin when a person came to imam zainul abidin 
And he said, Anshal, I'll come back to this incident. A person came to Imam Zainul Abidin. He said, I've got my daughter. She is ready, ready to get married. What kind of person should I find for her? And Imam Al Islam says, don't look at the people. They are saying, praying five times and Nawafil and Salatul Layl and they keep fasting and they do all sorts of deeds. Because most of the time people do these deeds because of their habits. If they do not fulfill their habit, in that case, they feel terrible inside. To get rid of this problem within themselves, they do these worship. So doing worship with the habit is not going to take us anywhere. And then Imam al Islam says, if you really want to test a person, either travel with a person or either do some business with a person. After doing the business, see how good that person is in the business and how good this person and helpful while you are in the travel with the same person. That is the only way to see the person because when we have some difficulties, the inner of ourselves that comes out. So Imam al Islam says, don't look at people's too many sajdas or if they have got mark on the forehead and they're with the prostration, but don't get deceived. Look at, because most of the people, he said most of the people, they do worship. They start with the very beautiful and straight niya intention. But gradually, shaitan takes them to this habit. If their salat is one second late for some genuine reason, they start feeling something itching inside. That itching should be there. I'm not saying that this itching should not be there. You must say your salat awwal a time. But it's been said by Amirul Mumineen and few other masumin. If you do worship every day, sometime take a day off, take few of the worship off and feel. If you are doing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will have different feeling. If you are doing for yourself, then you will not be able to sit back. But at the same time, be careful. I am not saying that the one who does worship, all the people they are doing because of the habit. It's not like that. So please do not get mixed up. Say salawat please. Allah. Inshallah. Do we remember that incident? We are talking about that person who used to take the shroud out from the grave. So when this neighbor of this person, he died first night because he had this habit, even though if he didn't need, but he still had the habit, he went onto the grave and he had a way to put his hand into the grave and to pull out the piece of cloth, that shrouding or coffin. He put his hand and he pulled out. This is after Moses and before Jesus, this incident took place, according to Imam Zainul Abidin in Hayatul Guru. So he put his hand into the grave and he took out the piece of cloth. So then he took the cloth and while he was just prepared to walk, he took few steps and he heard a, a voice coming from the grave. He said, you promised me you will not take my coffin off. Why did you do this? So when he heard that, he started shivering. He got scared. Azizan, we are so lucky. We are the nation of this great mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is called Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa In the time of Moses, there was for a certain patch, if a person used to commit a sin, for example, adultery, or drinking alcohol, or doing other sorts of sin, in the night time, from the angels, it was written on that person's door that this person committed this sin on in his house or such and such place. So everybody knew. So that's why people are scared to commit any sin. But because of the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our holy prophet, our sins are hidden because of the rahmat of holy prophet. Azizan. This person when he heard this from the grave, he said that you promised me you will not do this. Why did you do this? And he starts shivering and he was very, very scared. When he went home, when he went back home, he was sick severely and he realized that he will not spare for another three, four days. He's had four sons. We are talking about dust. I'm, I am with my topic. <clears throat> he's, he's had four sons. He called all of his four sons and he said, I was the worst of creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last sin I did, I know I will not be forgiven. Because that is the biggest sin. Because a person called me and I promise I will not do it. But at the same time, I did it again. 
And he, they said, Baba, what are you talking about? He said, don't you worry about that. I was the bad person for other people, but I was the best father for you. I provided you everything which I could. Now, I have one desire from four of you. And they said, Father, you give us the command and your desire will be done. He said, once I die, take my body, don't wash my body, don't put coffin on my body, and just burn my body. Once my body completely turned into dust, then make four portions of that dust, and each of you pick up one portion, one of you just take it, and where you can see there is a furious wind, just throw into the wind. The other one should, should take that portion of dust and put onto the mountain. And another one, the take, take it, put into the sea. And the fourth one, take and just mix into the sand of desert. And they said, Baba, why? said, you promised me. You do this. They promised their father. End of the day, when he died, their ch his children, they burnt his body, made the dust into four portions, and they placed on these four places. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the wind, the jungle, the mountain, the sea, and the desert. Bring all the particles back of that person's body. When everything be become together, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned into the human shape and asked, why did you do this? Why did you command that your body should be burned when you know it's against Islam? Because Christianity and Judaism in its originality is Islam. Because in the deen, in the Allah, in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in the Quran. Why did you do this? And that time, now here, our point is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gathered all of his dust and he become the same man again. And he was putting his head down and he said, Ya Allah, I was shy before you because I committed a big sin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Your shyness of this few seconds before me, I have forgiven all of your sin. So Azizan, there are so many incidents can be discussed when it comes to dust. He created us before without any example and he can create us again. Say salawat please. And shall I go for the last one? Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahir rahman rahim wa min ayatihi an khalakakum min turabin thumma idha antum basharun tantashirun. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Among our signs that we have created you from dust. Azizan, if another place, I don't remember the surah name, in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If you, all the jinns and all the human beings, all of you get together, and if you try to create just one little fly, you cannot. Even if a fly takes away something from our hand, we cannot go after the fly and to take it back. Azizan, think about fly. Forget about fly. Think about an ant. Forget about an ant. Think about the germs which we cannot see with our bare eyes. Who creates them? A person came to an atheist, came to Imam Sadiq al -Islam. He came to Imam Sadiq al -Islam. And you know there are some of the maggots. If you have uh, dust and when the water goes inside, if you keep them on a safe place, you can see the maggots are coming out. Because there are some of the maggots which take their birth within the soil, soil, within the soil. So he came to Imam Sadiq al Islam and he had a little bottle. And in the bottle there was some dust, wet dust, and within the dust there were some of the maggots. They were just moving here and there. And he came to Imam Sadiq al Islam. And he said that, you said that there is a creator. When I say everything is created by the nature, like the Big Bang Theory. So he was giving Big Bang Theory that time. So Big Bang Theory is not a new theory. He said, look at that. You say that the creator is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when I say, I am, you do, do not consider me, but I have created these old maggots. I am the creator of these maggots. 
And Imam Sadiq Islam looked at him and smiled. He said, okay, are you the creator of these maggots? And he said, yes. I, he said that, okay, tell me, how many males and females are among these maggots? So Azizan, it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who creates. Whoever creates in the world, they create from the raw material. But who is the creator of that raw material? That is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no one is with him. For example, we see there is a Christian lady. There is a Christian lady in Makkah. In the days of Hajj. She is outside the Makkah. And she is crying with three or four little children. Five, seven years of age. And there was a cow dead next to that woman. A person came. Very simple clothes. And there was a big mark of praying, prostrating on his forehead. Big one. And he came to that lady and he said, Lady, why are you crying? And she said, Buzurwar, I'm Christian. And because that person looked like Muslim with the dress and all the things. So she recognized, she said, you are Muslim, but I'm Christian. And I had only one this cow with the milk, we used to use some of the milk to drink ourselves and to my children and we used to sell some of the milk to earn our living. And that Buzurgwar said, what happened to your cow? She said, you can see the cow is dead. And that person said, say, okay, don't make a noise. He went close to that cow and he kicked the cow and said, stand up, biiznillah. And that cow stood up. Who was this person? A seventh Imam, Imam Musa Qazim Alayhi Salaam. Azizan, they have these powers to bring the dead alive. We see in the Quran, when Jesus Alayhi Salatu Was Salaam is being written in Surah Ali Imran, it's been written in Surah Maryam, that Jesus Alayhi Salaam, he brings the dead, dead alive. Or he made one of a bird as well. Some of the historians say that was the bat which was created by Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. But they all do it. They have the power. But this power, the mutlika power only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 124,000 prophet and 14 infallible. They are the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything for 14 and fallible. Everything. And gives sustenance because of them. But the sustainer, Rabb, Khalik, Malik, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, yes, yes. Inshallah, few of, uh, uh, two of the, inshallah, Quranic verse we recite and then inshallah we go for the next section. Say salawat please. Surah Al Imran, Surah number 3, verse number 59, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna masala Isa in the kamathale Adam. The example of Jesus before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the example of Adam alayhi salam. Why? Khalakahu, we created him. Khalakahu min turab, thumma kala lahu kun fayakun. That we created. What actually happened here when the Christian of that in the time of the Holy Prophet, you all remember about this Mubahila. This verse is from the Mubahila section. When these people came and they said, Jesus is the God. He is one of the three. So they said everything. And then the Holy Prophet put this question before them. He said, why do you say Jesus is the Lord? They said, Jesus is the Lord because... In this world, you can't have a child without father and mother. And he had mother. No father. And nobody touched her. And even it's written in Surah Maryam. In Surah Maryam and Surah Al Imran, where Hazrat Maryam, alayha, the mother of Jesus, alayhi salatu was salam, when Jibreel alayhi salam, came, when she was on her own in the room, and he said that Allah is giving you this glad hiding that you will have a son. And she said that, I am not of a bad character and nobody touched me. How could I have a sin? And they said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is my command and it will happen. So these Christians of that time, they said, O Prophet, O the Prophet of Muslim, 
Jesus didn't have father and then the holy prophet after revealing this verse he said inna masala isa in the life kamasale adam he said if jesus is lord because he didn't have the father what about adam no father no mother <laughs> so in that case adam should adam and eve they should be the god but they are not god god is beyond the thinking of any and every human being last of the quranic verse for today this one is in suratun na suratun amma yatasalun surah naba where the 30th juz start is the very last verse and the last part wa yaqulul kafiru ya laytani kuntu turaba this is the last verse on the day of resurrection you have seen these complaints and these claims of the non believers they said how can we turn back as a human being again when we turn into dust now here allah subhanahu wa taala giving this example kafir means the one who denies and that denier can be among the muslim among the sunnis among the shias because denying with your action by saying by tongue yes it gives you the advantages because if a person comes and say i'm muslim and we have to and recites the kalima we have to get to take the words of that person now that person can get married to muslim lady or can uh, we can eat the zabiya of his hand old and his izzat jaan mal all is safe among the muslims but if there is no iman in heart wa yaqul al kafiru ya laytani kuntu taraba those people they used to say in the world once we turn into dust how can we come into existence and on the day of judgment when they see everything is coming back now their lord is there for all sorts of accountability from them that is the time when they say what they going to say alas i would have turned into dust i was never ex existed wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillah rabbil